Hi, Rashid here. Today we will look into interconnect. We looked into transistor so far. This was our PMA, this was our NMOS, and we look at different what we call base layers. So whenever somebody says base layer, they mean, this means the difference, uh, this diffusion layer. So diffusion layer is which drain and source are made up of. This one, diffusion, like a P plus, P plus in the case of P mass, N plus, N plus in case of N mass. Gate, um, oxide layer. Uh, the, these are the base layer, the very transistor layer, the core layers, the core materials that a transistor is made up of. But then you need to connect different transistors. So in this case, think of this as substrate. This is our silicon substrate, the silicon um, material that we got, that single crystal we got. What we did, we got a whole wafer. Then on the wafer, we have uh, created P wells and N wells. P, P areas for um, N mask and N wells, then the create P mask. Now what we need to do is these core layers, the basic layers of uh, oxide gay, we need to connect to each other. So think of this, you are seeing right now two transistor on the front. There are more on the back, on the left, on the right, on the front. Eventually we need to make gates. We need to connect different transistor. We need to connect two, one PMOS and MOS together to connect the transistor, then the input of the transistor so the input of the inverter needs to connect to a previous stage and output to need to go to the next stage and so on and on and on. So how that interconnection happens? If you start creating this diffusion, make a diffusion, a bigger one, short this. Diffusion is good a conductor, but so you'd short it. Now if you need to connect another one, you short it. Okay, you can only two connects. Then what happens of the output you short it? So you ha you are very limited, very few wires you'll be connecting that and if you draw more than you'll be shorting things together. So you need to have an opportunity to connect this transistor connected to a far away transistor, this transistor to another transistor. So it's like um, multiple people want to reach the ground floor of the building. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe bathrooms are on the ground floor. And everybody has to come from the top floors to ground floor. Then you need to create multiple ways to come down. Otherwise, the place will be pretty congested. So think of it as like a five-story building. Uh, you have, um, then people are at different level. They need to come down and go to the bathroom. Or maybe the main entrance is there. They need to get out and come in and out. And there is a, the traffic. Okay, that's a better example. So what you need to do is you need to give them a different path. So think of this thing as a transistor and the interconnect, this whole interconnect. So this is um, 250 nanometer intertechnology. There's a paper on it. That came in, in 98, 99, around that time frame. So it's an old technology, but it's good enough to explain you the, the core concept here. So what you do is you have transistor at the base um i think let's do this one maybe maybe let's draw a circle you have different transistor i think that we are doing it 3D type. This is diffusion, polygase, diffusion, uh, sorry, and drain source, blah, blah. Then what we do is we put another a layer on top of it, wherever. We can put layers. So these are different. You can draw different things, small, big, but you need to draw in a certain way in These are different wires you connect based on the connection. It's not like a doesn't Then you draw 
another one the next floor comes like this so this is that one so what you do is again relative sizes are not correct this is more like a representation picture for example you see the gate i made pretty small but this next thing is pretty big that's not the case okay just think of this this is a more like a logical representation so a polysilicon gate now we want to connect to metal one so what we do is we throw a ladder into the next floor so it's like a tight connection like think of this as a as a as a lift kind of way going up uh, or like a small area through which we have a ladder to go up. so then metal one metal when connect to the next floor when that floor comes like this and the box the ladder or the lift that connects metal one to metal two is via one then from metal two you can go another floor through via tools you can put a lot of vias wherever you need a connection tools. let's say there's another cell it needs to go here so what you do is you put another metal three here and drop a diff via over over this metal two so i just shown one metal one via metal two via two each via is called a different name then metal three metal four metal five so you are kind of going up transistors sit at the very base and through them you can connect the front side. so you can use these vias and metal straps on top of them so that you can connect all the transistors together and at that time this was enough for five layers to kind of address the entire number of transistors on a wafer or on a die that we have now as more and more as this technology scaling happens stones get smaller smaller we need more layers these layers are not sufficient you need to have more floors to connect the longer bigger area and that's really happened as we scale down i'll show you some example but right now i really hope that you have understood the concept there that it's like a wire you connecting this one to another one you just connect metal one let's drop in a metal one you, you you're right early you probably don't want to go up you want to stay in metal one especially in a lot of adjacent closer areas you want to stay you connect with metal one but there won't be enough and there is a limit on how small these metals can be drawn or how close these metals can be printed or drawn and the the technology that really does that is called lithography and i will touch that in a video when we get into scaling how through lithog how lithography is important and how through that we print all these even the the transistor metal layers sorry base layers so the base layer then we have metal layers and between we have vias so the two important terminologies or three rather is how much distance we need to have between it's predefined by the technology based on lithography or fabrication constraints and that thing is called pitch the distance between the center of one layer and its adjacent keep in mind i'm talking about metal five not talking about metal four the via height defines okay how much is the distance between metal four and metal five so pitch is that distance and typically these are the dimensions you're given and when we say design rule checking one of the rule is pitch what is the slow, smallest distance these two metal can be together and if in your layout you draw them uh, in the in the cat tools pretty close then you're violating a rule that's called design rule violation or design rule constraints and for a particular metal you have a height which is called thickness and then you have width and then you have an aspect ratio that thing is important before i show you okay different word what these layers are made up of let's look into the dimensions first and i got this table from the technology 250 nanometer 
from into research paper that was published in Hyderabad. For each layer, there is they mention the pitch, the thickness or height, and aspect ratio, and what the purpose, what this layer was mainly used of. And uh, I drew this ahead of time for you to understand this important concept. I drew all this to a scale. Each distance represents around two hundred um, micron. So channel is two fifty nanometer. Sorry, um, each each one is two hundred nanometer, not micron. So I just rounded it to two hundred channel. 250 will come around that but I don't know everything and I then drew metal one 450 nanometers or roughly 500 yeah a little less than I do it but and then width is 300 similarly metal 2 and metal 3 are same you might see them a little bit different here in terms of making straight lines but then look at the metal to height and the width. Metal four height and width and look at the metal five and half. Look at this our tiny transistor here. So see when you have to connect, what's the challenge here? If there are multiple transistor here, they are literally lying like there will be a drain here, then and there is a maybe a source here, another here. Those transistors are like this one. And then these buildings on top of that that you need to build to connect them. They're gigantic. But why you want to do this? I mean, you probably be thinking, why not make them small, tiny? Yes, you can make them. If they have made a transistor tiny, uh, they can make the metal. But the problem is the resistance of these metals. And you remember from the resistance lecture, resistance is the, the longer a metal, and this is like a 2D, it's Think like that, they are going down into the into the iPad. So it depends on the length and depends on the width. So it depends on that area. The higher the area, the lower the resistance. So the one closer to transfer, you really need to have some other so that you can make a connection. But as you go up, you need to be able to have bigger one. Because some of these lower metal was connect adjacent transistors and maybe then if this connect need to be connect here instead of all metal one you probably go through metal metal three here to go here you go through here so these ones are typically used for a little bit longer distance within the as you have seen on inverter you have signals traveling, input, output. You also have metal. Every transistor on the chip needs to be connected to supply voltage for PMOS, ground, and MOS. And those power signals also need to travel through these metals. So typically what happens is a lot of chip-wide routing for clocks or power, they happen on a higher level layers. Their resistance is low, so less delay or they are better for getting a lot more current. But the lower ones have a higher resistance and they are slow. So they should not travel a longer distance. So you understand, I mean, we, we want to lower it, but one way is if we make, um, we want to make them a little bit taller. So aspect ratio is why is like this, why not complete square because we want to keep the width as small as possible so that we don't widen this one. So what we typically do is make a little bit more height. So it looks like a, a little rectangle with the length going uh, up wide, upwards. Hopefully that was clear, this table is clear, just to give you an idea of how metals are laid down. Um, okay, the other thing is uh, what kind of material they are made up of so let's take that in the next video otherwise this will be pretty long okay let's see each other in the next video thank you bye